Hi, I'm Robert Dugan from High Point Scientific. Today I'm here with Brian from Celestron's product development team. We're here to talk about the new CGX line of telescopes and equatorial mounts from Celestron. Before we get into the details of the new product, Brian, can you give us just an overview of what the inspiration was for this new line? Yeah, certainly. So the new CGX German equatorial mount, it is a complete redesign uh, by our Celestron engineering team. And some of the goals that we wanted to achieve was to get a mount that would support a much higher load capacity, which it does. It also caters very well to today's astro imager, and it also plays into the uh, ability to operate your telescope remotely, whether it be from your own backyard or even for a remote observatory application. So we're really excited. There are a lot of new features in this mount that, that actually cater to the end user and be able to maximize your experience for both visual and especially astro imaging. We often see amateur astronomers looking for the best of both worlds. High payload capacity for the mount, telescope system, as well as lighter weight for transportation purposes. What have you guys done with the CGX to accommodate that need? Yes, this is where the mechanical design comes into play. So a few things that we've done to achieve a higher load capacity while maintaining basically the same weight as its predecessor, the CGM, uh, we have made the stance on the mount a little bit lower and a little bit more stout. So the dovetail saddle actually sits lower in relation to the base of the mount. It also sits closer to the axes of right ascension and declination. So you get a little less moment arm as a result. We've also increased the rigidity throughout, and you can see some of this in the industrial design. We've hogged out as much weight as reasonably possible while maintaining the rigidity and keeping the ribs in here, taking out material where possible. As a result, you have a much faster dampening time, and now we're able to achieve a much higher load capacity. So the CGX will support 55 pounds of instrument load capacity. It seems like you guys have gone to great lengths to be really conservative with your estimates. We see that with some of the higher end players in the market. What do you attribute that to and, and what can a consumer really expect out of the mount if they decided to push it? That's right. Yeah, the, we, we definitely have astro imaging in mind, so that's something to keep in mind when you say, we say there's a 55 pound load capacity, we know that's going to be used for astro imaging. So we've already tested the mount to sustain this weight, and actually much more weight than that just during our tests and engineering to see what the mount can do and we're very comfortable with 55 pounds. So by that means you can load the mount up to its full capacity, your camera accessories, everything, and still expect to have the best guiding performance, the best stability, the best tracking, and that's fully what we intend. And the, you're right, there is some, we are a bit modest with our load capacity. We want to make sure that it's a very reasonable figure that's truly going to hold your instrument. And as you know, with astro imaging, the expectation is that you must be able to track and support your, your telescope very well. So as customers upgrade their gear, upgrade their optical tube, we often find that they have to purchase an additional dovetail plate to accommodate their new gear. It seems like you guys have addressed that in the design of the CGX. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yes, certainly. Uh, we have now incorporated a dual fit dovetail saddle. So it will accommodate the, the wider CGE or Lozmendi D-style plate. Uh, it will also accommodate the more narrow Vixen or CG5 style plate. And that is a big convenience. Uh, eliminates the need to have to add adapter plates to fit your different sized optical tubes. So that's going to cover any instrument that someone wants to put on here. Excellent. In addition to the new saddle plate, it also appears that Celestron has upgraded the tripod in a significant way. Can you describe what you guys have done with the tripod in this design? Sure. For CGX, our tripod now has a wider stance. That right there is going to improve the overall stability, which it does. That's contributing to the better stability of the mount. We were also using uh, a new versatile accessory tray, uh, which we actually like to call the jack of all trays. It's our little inside comment in our department. But with this accessory tray, you can actually collapse the tripod legs with the tray still attached. So that's a big advantage just for throwing it in the trunk of your car, as I would taking out to a dark sky site. And the, the tray itself will support three inch and a quarter eyepieces and one two inch eyepiece. And there's also a miscellaneous accessory tray portion, which can actually accommodate uh, most cell phones up to about the size of like an iPhone 6. Excellent. The tripod itself also has 
height uh, index marks, uh, just for a quick reference, being able to set the height and level the tripod so that all three tripod legs are at the same height. And you'll notice the, the lock levers on the height adjustment are now face inward instead of outward, just to minimize any potential trip hazard there or you know snagging your shoelaces as you're walking around the tripod at night. Seems like you guys covered everything with that. Yeah, we think that we've made some good improvements here that have improved the performance of the mount and the usability of it. The CGX now includes spring-loaded worm gears and belt drive. Can you describe how this feature is different from other mounts on the market and how it's going to assist amateur astronomers when they're out in the field? Yeah, with your, with your spring-loaded worm gears, so that's going to maintain an optimum gear mesh in the mount for both right ascension and declination. And especially for right ascension, so if you always have the optimum gear mesh, not only is your backlash going to maintain a good level, but the tracking is smooth, it eliminates um, any issues with the load increasing or decreasing. And we've now seen that in our earlier test results. The tracking accuracy is in fact very good, in part thanks to the spring-loaded worm gears. In addition to that, the worm gear itself is driven by the motor, it's driven by a belt and pulley. Before, it was driven uh, by a spur gear. If you imagine a spur gear, they have teeth and there's a little bit of a gap between those teeth and that's contributing to backlash. So that's now been eliminated with the belt drive. So you have a more responsive mount with less backlash. And now thanks to the spring-loaded worm gears, you also have smoother tracking. It actually makes the, the motor sound quieter when it's slewing. And it's helping your tracking accuracy, which is especially important for astroimaging. And that belt is different than traditional belts that people are used to on their equatorial mounts, correct? Yeah, I think some in the past, and this is just to note, it's the first for Celestron to incorporate belt drives in our equatorial mounts. So we've selected actually very robust um, belt drives. I almost think of it almost like an automotive timing belt. Um, they're very substantial. They're not prone to stretching or fatiguing. Uh, and we've already done some extensive tr uh, stress tests on these. And you know you can actually have a closer look at the belt. In fact, we even have uh, clear windows here. Where you can have a look at the belt while your, your mouth is slewing or if you just want to monitor what's happening. This actually comes off easily if necessary, if you wanted to have a closer look. And uh, you can actually see that it's a, it's a pretty substantial setup there. Right. So let's start with is known as the technology leader in our industry. I see that this mount comes equipped with all-star polar alignment features and technology. Can you tell me how that's going to benefit the amateur astronomer looking to purchase this mount? Certainly, uh, the all-star polar alignment, which is a software polar line contained in our NextStar Plus hand control, it's the best way to polar align the mount. You can use any bright named star in the sky. It doesn't have to be Polaris. Um, it can be any bright named star that you have a good uh, line of sight to. And once you've achieved a go-to alignment with your mount, you select the polar line feature in your hand control. The mount will go to that named star, and then it moves away from that named star by the amount of your polar alignment error. So all you have to do is center that star by mechanically adjusting the altitude and azimuth adjusters on the mount, mm -hmm. which is actually a lot easier to do now in the CGX. And once you've done that, you're polar aligned, and actually to a high level of accuracy too. So you don't have to drift a line, and there are more kind of painstaking ways to polar align your mount. But with the software polar line and the Next Star Plus, it's not only a lot easier and faster, but you're getting that level of accuracy you need for, for the most precise tracking possible. We noticed that you're including new software with the CGX that you developed or co-developed with Plane Wave Instruments. Can you tell me a little bit about this collaboration and how it's going to benefit CGX users? Oh, sure. So the software we're including now, the CGX, is a direct telescope control software for your PC. And as you mentioned, that we're co-developing this with Plane Wave Instruments. It's actually pretty powerful software. It's the, it's the same engine that's used to control their observatory class instruments. And we're using that now to control the CGX. So it connects directly to the CGX via USB, which you'll be able to see in more detail here. It's on the mount itself, connected directly to your PC. The software will control advanced go-to features, which, such as multi-point mount modeling. Uh, you can also plate solve with your imaging camera when used in conjunction with Maxim DL software, which is going to be a common combination for astro imagers, especially when used in the observatory like setting. And this software is really expanding the capabilities of your telescope control. You actually you can also, of course, control motorized focuser. 
because this is when you think about what you would need to control your telescope remotely. Obviously, you need a camera, you need to control the mount, which we have our CGX, and you'll need to have some ability to focus. So you'll be able to do all of that with the software that we're working on with Plane Wave. Seems like you guys really took the software development to the next level with this product, and I think it's great. Yeah, we think you know having it's a more it's a more uh, turnkey solution, and more of that's needed now for astro imaging. You need to have things that are more uh, ready to go, and uh, actually eliminate fewer steps for the end user, which is very important. So circling back to the design of the mount for a second, I see that the new CGX has internal cabling, as well as home and limit sensors, and hard stops. Can you describe those particular features and how they're going to benefit the amateur astronomer? Uh, yes, uh, concerning the internal cabling, so you'll notice the only cable that you see that's outside of this mount is the cable going to the hand control. There is no deck cable, there's no other external cable. In addition to that, so not, not only is it making it look a lot cleaner and you have fewer potential cable snags and cable management issues, but you'll notice that the accessory ports and the power port remain stationary as the mount moves in right ascension, which is not true for a lot of other German equatorial mounts. So that's a big advantage for cable management and that also plays into potential remote operation. Now the, the home sensors and limit sensors allow, starting with the home sensors, they allow the scope to return to its home position no matter what happens. And when I say no matter what happens, in a remote situation you might have something like either a power failure or for whatever reason if you lose track of where the mount is pointing, you can always reinitialize the mount to go to the home position. In fact, that's what will always happen upon power up. When you first start up the mount, it will go to the home position once you hit, once you press enter. And that's important to know because no matter what happens, you always have this first initialized point. Uh, there are some mounts with on-axis encoders uh, that that might be able, that might be able to keep track of the go-to alignment um, if they get moved. But if for any reason that go-to alignment is lost, the encoder won't tell you where the mount is. When you have a home sensor like this, you can always restore a tone base. You always have your starting point. Now, when you're tracking and you're imaging those long nights, you're going to want to track as long as possible past the meridian because that's the sweet spot in the sky, right? So this mount can actually track 20 degrees past the meridian. But if you keep going beyond that, the limit sensor will engage and it will actually stop tracking automatically. And the same is true if you're slewing the mount. If you're slewing the mount into its, into its extreme limit, it will automatically stop. It's not going to collide into the mount. That also plays into having fewer potential cable snags, uh, instruments colliding into the mount, anything like that. And as a last fail-safe resort, we do have a hard stop. So if you go past the limit sensor, the mount eventually just stop mechanically against the hard stop. This is, in, in, this is incorporated for both right ascension and for declination. And that again is a last fail safe effort. And these are things that come in handy for especially the remote type of application when you're astro imaging. When considering upgradability for a moment, will the CVX use the standard RS-232 and USB connectors that Celestron customers have become accustomed to? Fortunately, now you don't have to worry about adapting from RS-232 to USB. The next R Plus hand control that's included with the CGX now includes USB built right into the hand control. So that is going to make your firmware upgrading a lot easier. You just connect the USB from your PC to the hand control, no adapter necessary. Uh, firmware upgrades are now going to be a lot more straightforward, I think. Excellent. Now, will customers be able to use wireless features that you guys have, such as SkyFi and StarSense with this new system? Very good point. Good question. Absolutely. Uh, you'll be able to use the SkyPortal Wi-Fi module and StarSense. You can actually use them both together now if you want, or if you want to use just the Wi-Fi with your iPhone, you can. Uh, they are both fully compatible with CGX, and I think they make a great addition to actually improving the ease of use of the mount. Excellent. Brian, I just want to thank you for taking the time to discuss the new CGX, its features, and all of its capabilities. I personally can't wait to get out in the field with it and start seeing what our customers come back with and the feedback that they have. I think you guys have really hit it out of the park here. So thank you. Oh, thank you, Robert. It's been our pleasure. We're very much looking forward to this and getting out in the hands of many imagers out there. For more information on the CGX, please go to highpointscientific.com 
or call us at 800-266-9590. We'll be happy to answer any of the questions that you have.